All right, this is like take 10. This is Eric here again with another Ableton related screencast. I realized on the last video, I just kind of dove in without trying to explain what it was I'm trying to accomplish here or why you'd even care. So let me take just a moment and do that. My goal here is to set up some kind of workflow that I can use primarily to play live and secondarily to record tracks that feel more like a live performance than what I've done in the past which are very sort of sterile in the box type of arrangements. So I'm setting up the song structure with automation. So the recorded version will include me playing things like muting and unmuting tracks, uh, sweeping a filter, adding accent notes, that sort of thing. So to that end, the next step after I finished off the, um, the song structure with the rhythm changes in the last video was to incorporate my Electron Analog 4 into this track. I love this box, but I'm still very much learning my way around it. I wanted to use it to add melodic elements to the drum track I showed in the last video. And so I built up an intro and breakdown and two different melody parts for this track, which I wanted to change in sync with the drum pattern changes that I programmed into Tattoo. So you can send program change messages uh, from MIDI clips in Ableton. It uses this uh, area of the notes dialog inside a MIDI clip and there are three sub messages that you can change bank sub bank and program and after a little bit of googling i realized that uh, the analog 4 just treats all uh, eight banks of 16 patterns as program 1 through 128 even though from the front panel user interface it shows them organized in banks a through h and 16 patterns in each bank so in this example um, I'm using 17 here because I started my program on bank B program one. So that's 17 uh, bank B program two is 18 and so forth. Um, I quickly realized that live only sends these program change messages, although it'll get there, it only sends them at the beginning of a clip. So I experimented with things like making short four bar long MIDI clips and then using follow actions here to move to the next clip and previous clip uh, as the uh, in sort of in time with the pattern changes on the drum machine but that quickly became untenable and what I really wanted to do was to send them in line as uh, automated parameters right inside the clip where the um, the drum pattern change is already happening so it was back to the Googles and the answer came of all places from a uh, lynda.com tutorial video that is made by uh, Daniel Minceris, who is the keyboardist for St. Vincent, the, uh, Annie Clark's amazing band. And he had the same problem for their live show where he wanted to be able to change the per song presets for the guitars and keyboards all from his laptop. And so he had exactly this problem. The solution that he came up with this Max for Live plugin, and I'll include a link to that in the uh, description here. but. It allows you to map MIDI continuous control messages to program change messages, which is exactly what I was looking for. Um, so I got it installed and set it up in Ableton by setting up a sort of a dummy MIDI track here that sends the MIDI from the drum rack out to the Analog 4. And I set it to, on, to send those messages on channel 16 because there are real um, note MIDI messages as well on that channel. I didn't want those to sound on any of the Analog 4 tracks. So then I dropped the plug in onto the, onto the track here and just picked a arbitrary uh, con, uh, continuous control uh, channel to change and picked number 15 there. And then back over onto the uh, MIDI clip uh, that, that has the pattern changes on it, I was then able to open up the uh, envelopes and start assigning these um, uh, change messages to uh, continuous control channel 15. You can just draw them in like any other um, automation. And sure enough, that works. Um, here, and I'll hit play and see sh and show you. So here we are at the intro. It's important to actually launch the clip that contains the control messages. melody part and so forth so this works I'll stop it so I'm not talking over the music but um, 
Is it perfect? No. Drawing the automation like this is pretty crappy. You can't zoom in on the vertical axis the same way that you can on the horizontal axis. So uh, you have to use the command uh, find placement in order to um, change these one value um, or one number away value changes uh, on the track. And if you're changing more than one value at a time, you have to use these sort of pairs of stair step automation points the way I have here. Uh, in between at the point where you want the change to happen otherwise if you change it over uh, if you have the bar extend over a long period of time and you jump say two or three values over that duration um, Ableton Live will helpfully smooth that value over the whole length of the bar and so instead of going from say 19 back down to 17 it'll go 19 and then 18 somewhere in the middle and then 17 when you get down there so I use these uh, pairs to in order to make those kinds of jumps um, it's just, it's not great. I'm not incredibly happy with it, but it does solve the problem I started out with in a reasonable way, and it provides some interesting learning opportunities. So it seemed like a worthwhile way to finish off this track. I'd love to hear feedback on whether this was helpful, if you think there's a better way to accomplish this, and most of all, if you can identify what track was the inspiration for this little 303 melody line that I made. I'll let the track roll for a little bit. Off boot out. <laughs>